What's up guys, it's your boy Kid Crayon and today we're going to be checking out the 94 alcohol based graphic markers. These bad boys are the solid colour 36 pack. These are double tipped with fine on one side and a broader chisel tip on the other end. All these markers have been colour matched the MTN spray paint range and have the exact same vibrancy and depth of colour as the MTM 94 cans. They come in a few different sets, they come as a 12, 24 or 36. I'm going to be using the 36 pack of solid colours. Um, it'd be quite good if I had the grey tones as well. And to be honest, I think I'm going to buy them. But when you combine the grey with any of these, it kind of opens up a whole different spectrum of colours and different shades. But, we don't need it today. I haven't got it, so... We're also going to be testing out some different paper types with these pens. I'm fairly new to using this graphic marker so I thought it could be quite cool to just experiment with some different papers. So we've got just a normal sketchbook. Um, it's not designed for alcohol markers but this is pretty much what most people, most artists would have lying around. Um, I'm going to be using the Aquafine uh, textured watercolour paper. Also, this just came, been pretty excited about this. This is a Montana Black Book. Uh, so these are actually designed for alcohol markers, so I presume this is going to be pretty awesome. And the last thing I've got is just this 160 gram white stock card. Uh, a few people told me this is the best thing to draw on. So yeah, I'm hoping that this is going to be quite cool. The, the good thing about using paper like this as well is I don't have to tear it out of a sketchbook. Uh, not that I'd be making a mistake, but if I was to do something really cool, you could then sell uh, this as a one-off. Um, as well as the 94 markers, I'm also going to be using a couple other materials. So we're going to be using the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Fine Liners. Um, you've probably seen me use these quite a lot because I use them for most projects. You can use pretty much any fine liner, but you have to make sure that it's waterproof. I use these quite a lot just because they're my favourite, but the Uniball ones are also pretty good. Secondly, I'm going to be using the Stabilo 0.88s. These are just different colored fine liners. Good if you don't want to just have a black outline in certain sections. I'll also be using the Black Widow wax coloring pencils, which work really well with markers for extra fades and shading. If you don't have a huge range of markers yet, I recommend using the coloring pencils as well, just because you can get those extra shades. I'm super keen to unbox these and start drawing. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. Oh, so we're kicking this off with the watercolor paper. And the letters that I'm doing are going to be very chill, super hippie, very mellow, lots of flowers. Peace and love, guys. Peace and love. So our sketch is done. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to jump in with the 94 markers. Um, I don't think this paper is going to be great. It's the Aquafine watercolor paper. But I'm going to do a bunch of sketches on different papers. We can work out what the best combo is later on. Um, but yeah, let's jump into it. What I love about these pencils as well is they were actually developed for people with arthritis so you don't actually have to apply too much pressure to get a really nice kind of bold fill of colour. This is the Aquafine watercolour paper. Um, it's quite good for the alcohol markers but really bad for the pencil. As you can see like the grain shows through on the paper when using the colouring pencil so you can't really get that fade which is well annoying. Um, I hate that. Um, but there's room underneath it so we'll do another uh, another little sketch and then we'll move on to some other paper but I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely loving these markers I think they're really cool uh, really vibrant they blend really well together uh, to be honest if I could be bothered I probably wouldn't even need to use the pencils but yeah let's jump straight into the next drawing because I want to bash a bunch of these out let's do it
So we'll finish with this one. To be honest, um, it did take the alcohol markers quite well, but I wasn't very happy with uh, the texture for the pencils. I mean, textured paper is not great if you want to do shading, you kind of get these little grainy bits, but I mean, if you don't have any other paper, if you have some watercolor paper around, it will do. It's definitely going to be better than printing paper. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of happy with how it came out. Uh, the markers are a lot of fun, a lot of fun to play with. And I know there's a few other tricks that I can experiment with that I'm going to do in the next piece. Next up, we've got the white card. So let's open up this bad boy. It's going to be quite fun working on something a bit bigger. Um, yeah, let's try it out. It was really good drawing on the surface this move. This is way better than the watercolor paper. Okay, so with this card, there was a little bit of a bleed. I think that might be because it was 160 grams. I think, yeah, if it was a bit, had a bit more of a paperweight to it, maybe it wouldn't have bled as much. But yeah, I'd say this is definitely a lot better than the watercolor paper. Um, I'll probably have a bit more experimenting with these. It's hard to kind of tell just from one, one trial. But yeah, look, I mean, I think it came out okay. Uh, bled quite a bit onto the back, but um, yeah, that's to be expected. I think that happens with most paper. So rather annoyingly, I just filmed a time lapse of myself drawing in the sketchbook and it didn't work. But I'll give you a quick review. So here's the crayon that I did in my sketchbook. What I found really good with this paper is obviously it doesn't have a texture to it. So it's really good with pencils and building up uh, different tones. The paper is also thick enough that uh, it didn't really damage the paper if I kept going over it with the marker. Um, it will bleed through onto the next page, but if you just put enough piece of paper there, it's all fine. So, to be fair, I think I'm probably going to keep using the sketchbook um, for more sketches like this because I'm really happy with the actual paper quality. Now I'm going to move on to the Montana Black Book. I've been the most excited to check this one out because, yeah, these are designed for markers. I'm going to go a bit more wild as well with the type of lettering that I'm going to do. Um, it's always good to have a pretty good first page in a sketchbook. But let's jump straight into it. Pow! Before I jump into doing the piece of artwork, I just wanted to show you guys how these blend together. So these are just the primary colours kind of overlaying each other. You can see the different tones that it creates by overlapping different colours. Another cool thing you can do is you can actually press the markers together. As, as you use the nib, the colours can blend together. If you don't overload it too much, it can be a bit better than this. But yeah, I just wanted to show you a couple of the little techniques that you can do. Um, and these don't destroy the marker, which is great. And they just go back to being their original colour. Okay, so this one's a little rougher than the other ones. Um, I don't know why, I just kind of went straight into it, kind of came up with the concept quite quickly. Uh, usually I refine the sketch a little bit better, but this is more of a test of the pens than my drawing skills. So I just wanted to yeah, lay something down quickly and yeah, have more fun with this one. Let's jump into this now because we've already done our little test with these 94 markers on this kind of paper and it looks like it's going to work very well. So let's do it. Oh hell yeah!
Okay, so I'm all finished with this one now. Uh, to be honest, I'm not massively happy with it. I think the spacing was, wasn't great and I think I could have coloured it a bit, a bit better. But I tried to use a lot of different blending techniques, different overlays of colour. And um, I think the one thing I've learned about these type of markers, alcohol markers, is it's definitely better to have a mixed media approach. It's good to use like Posca markers, crayons, pens, whatever gets the job done. But all finished. Uh, let's have a quick look at the result and then I'll give you my two cents on what I think about these 94 markers. Definitely really enjoying using these markers. I think um, I just want to get some more, um, keep practicing with them. Like anything, it takes a little bit of time to get good with it. But I think, you know, I'm, I'm uh, making some headway. I'm probably going to do a bunch of these process videos with me using these markers to do other sketches. So you probably see intermittently a few videos in between. But um, overall, I definitely rate these quite highly. The only negatives that I'm going to say about these are the colours are sometimes slightly off. Even when they dry, they're just not quite the same. But that's just something you have to learn. Um, another thing is these aren't refillable. So unlike the Copic markers, once they're done, they're done with. And they kind of cost a similar price. So another thing is because they're fairly new, they just don't have the same colour range. I'm sure MTN are going to release a bunch more colours in the future. This is just, you know, early stages. But overall, big ups, um, MTM94. Big shout out to everyone that's been encouraging me while I've been posting these things on Instagram. A lot of you have been giving me some really good tips on different materials to use, different paper. And um, yeah, just basically been encouraging. So yeah, big ups to all you guys. Um, yeah, I think that's probably a wrap for today. I'll catch you guys next week. As always, if you're not already a member of the sickest, most wickedest gang um, in the Southwest, Sub club. But yeah, I catch you guys the same time next week. Kapow! <laughs>